It's so nice to be by this fire to warm up during the holiday season. It really is, Andre. You know what I do when I'm feeling cold? No, Yuri. What's that? Do you roast marshmallows in the fire? Pour yourself a glass of eggnog? I do all these things, my friend. But when it's really cold out, after a long day of picketing, there's only one thing that really warms my heart. Organizing with the student workers of Colombia. Ah, yes. Nothing like some solidarity to get us into the holiday spirit. But I heard that Colombia's admin is on the naughty list this year. Absolutely. They have spent months freezing us out in negotiations. Dan Driscoll and the Deans have been playing reindeer games and stalling at the bargaining table with the help of their union-busting lawyer, Bernie Sugarplum. And do not forget the ghost of negotiations present, Provost Mary Mary Boyce, who haunts us with her emails but has yet to appear at a single bargaining session. And the Board of Trustees have been real scrooges, too. Yes, while Columbia's endowment has snowballed to over $14 billion, student workers have gotten left out in the cold. Bah, humbug. But enough about those Grinches. Let's spread some holiday cheer and talk about the student workers of Columbia's latest package that is under the tree. Great idea. The bargaining committee has shared a list of core demands and they've checked it twice by North Pole Link, the unit at weekly meeting. And the elves in the working groups have been hard at work making sure that we will approve this contract from head to mistletoe. Let's start with compensation. The cost of living in New York City makes us anything but holly and jolly. Some student workers make tens of thousands of dollars below the living wage. We don't want a lot for Christmas, but we do need raises that offset inflation. And while we'd love to deck our halls, right now many of us pay over 50% of our income and rent, sometimes right back to Colombia as our landlord. It is really hard to be festive when we're worrying about making ends meet or paying rent late. And there's a simple solution. Colombia needs to stop being so elfish and agree to pay us a living wage. Ah, uh, and we have also been fighting for better dental insurance. How can we think about gathering for a delicious holiday meal when we can't afford basic dental procedures? Paying thousands out of pocket for a root canal? Slay it ain't so. If that weren't bad enough, we also have many student workers who are parents. They need childcare so they can keep the holiday spirit alive and finish their dissertations on time. But wait, there's s'mores. We also can't accept the contract without full recognition of our unit. Columbia undermines the contributions of hourly workers, but we know that this rhetoric is ornament to divide us. Hmm, do you hear what I hear? It sounds like the administration is trying to ignore the NLRB ruling and keep student workers from benefiting from union protections. Speaking of protections, we are also asking for neutral arbitration in cases of discrimination and power-based harassment. Lumba has been up to no good, protecting abusers and trying to save its own reputation instead of offering survivors the real recourse that they need. Our only wish this year is for Colombia to recognize that our demands are reasonable and necessary. We'll make sure that there isn't a silent night on campus until they're met. It's been a long fight, picketing, planning rallies, fundraising, attending bargaining, and standing in solidarity with unions around the world. And even though we've been really sentimental about not being able to teach, our students know that our working conditions are their learning conditions. Yes, our undergrads have been some of our biggest supporters, marching with us and stocking up on treats to help us eat, drink, and be merry on the picket line. We know the university won't be good for goodness sake, so we need faculty to show up and support us at the bargaining table this week. Absolutely. There is no way that we win a fair contract without their help and yours. You can help us hold the line 
by donating to our hardship fund. We know that we're ringing the new year with a contract that ensures a merry and bright future for all student workers. We leave you with the classic Christmas tale. It was the night before strike comes. It was the night before strike comes, any morning side heights, as workers continue to fight for their rights. The picket line march around the campus of care, knowing they would receive a contract that was fair. The BC was tired of being on Zoom, or from his screen, Bertie Plum yelled at him, and boys in her emails, and Lee in his class, preach free speech and send propaganda in mass. From the sundial, admin heard such a clatter, peered out from low to see what was the matter. Testimonial flyers hung round the halls, as sounds of orange bucket drums bounced off the walls. Speeches and chants and calls to direct action echoed through campus as the movement gains traction. And what to their wondering eyes should appear? But thousands of workers all gathered right here. Marching together in perfect communion, they knew in an instant this was the union. With pickets in front of the gates hand in hand, they hooted and hollered and yelled their demands. Provision for dental for just compensation, for child care funds, for neutral arbitration. And from 116th up to 168th, they did cheer, we'll keep our workers safe. Faculty, other unions, our undergrads, came to march next to us as faithful comrades. And soon the word started to spread far and wide as more supporters came to the union side. Donations to the hardship fund did flow, and in came a tweet from Danny to be towed. Deliveries stopped, they couldn't get through. Even Fat Cat made an appearance. Woohoo! We know that this fight is not only ours, as more unions rise up to fight on just ours. NYPD, ICE, and gentrification. Our fight does not end after graduation. We're so deeply humbled, our minds truly blown by the solidarity that to us you all have shown. We leave you with this as we continue our fight. Mary strikes us to all and to all workers' rights.